Hey folks, welcome to another stream from Kinetic Cycle Coaching. I'm Coach Scott, here to entertain you, educate you, might even make you cringe or smile, but whatever, you're going to get great value. In this stream, I'm going to make you fast. Yeah, I'm going to give you tips and drills that are broken up over five various fields of attack that will give you an opportunity to dive into at least one or two of them to see instant, I mean instant results. Yes, that quick. Because there are a number of things that you can change immediately from what I'm going to say to you. So why fast coach? Well, I get lots asked so many questions about how do I get quicker coach? But we're going to dive beyond that. Dive beyond what it is to get quick. Because there's a couple of patterns you need to follow and you need to understand the process. Hey, also, in this session, folks, do you want to win something? Yeah, I've got something to give away. So we've been off uh, live for a little while, but during this show, one of you, at least one of you, will win a Kinetic T-shirt. All you've got to do is comment with the term or the word win. Now, if you are watching on Catch Up, do not worry because I want you still to comment with the term win and we will announce a winner or maybe two on next show's live. Next week's live show as you have not had the opportunity to go live, but why not? Hey folks, you can find me also on Instagram, TikTok, all the usual places. Okay, so... Do you want to get ready and dive into this? So where have you been, coach, for all these weeks? I've been resting and recharging my batteries, learning a new few swear words. <laughs> I promise you, don't worry. If you get offence by any of my language, please don't take offence. I'm not talking to you directly. I'm talking to myself. But this is going to be quite a nice little show. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to give you something that might blow your mind. It's to do with bike fitting, your performance, your breathing, and the clothing that you are wearing. Yes, you may just fall into a category or two of the categories that I saw on a recent trip in Spain and then saw again as I returned back to sunny Scotland. Yes. Okay, folks, how are we all doing? Now, remember, if you happen to see someone in the chat with a jersey and a yellow jersey because we've had 12 months of the community involvement. So how do you join them? You just become a member on YouTube's membership. But the best membership exists inside school. Come and join me inside the best free community there is about cycling, okay? You need to get in the community now. You have a few weeks before the end of 2023. If you're watching this video, trust me, you need to be in the community before the end of the year. Okay, say no more, coach. Okay, shall we get dived into it? Yeah, who's ready to go? Me, let's go, coach. So what I want to start off with is, okay. Oh, by the way, can someone do a shout out if we hit over 100 live viewers, okay? Because on the first show back, I'm expecting somewhere between 50 and 100. If you are live, hit that like button, okay? It really does help push the channel because we're pretty dead at the moment. We're not sharing all this wonderful content with the rest of you, YouTube, okay? So let's start by something that we need to clear up before we kick things in. The sum of all our genetics is not equal. So before we start talking about speed, getting fast, getting fitter, we need to understand that your genetics and the amount of the number of metrics that I am going to mention in the next 30 minutes will blow your mind. But we all start from our unique little place, whether you're born in a cabbage patch field or you're born in a lovely big plush hospital. OK, it doesn't matter. Your genetics, genetics are unique to you. And throughout our time, we are impacted by external and intrinsic metrics every single day of the week, every hour, every minute, every second. And the longer you spend with me, I'll teach you how to interpret those metrics. I am speaking in the beautiful language of 
English combined with Scottish, combined with the west coast of Scotland's Ayrshire slang. Okay, that one metric that's external so that you can listen and hear. We're all slightly different the way we speak, but we are all very different in the way we absorb many of the metrics. So understand, every single one of us was born with a gift of some sort, physically, emotionally, socially, whatever. Many people don't get the opportunity to find out what it is because they hide away. They're scared, okay, of exposing themselves to failure. In any session you watch from me, you will understand that we do not sign up to that. We're going to find out what every exposure to every type of metric does to us. We are going to die one day, okay, but we are not going to die with curiosity. We will know exactly how it felt to do everything we wanted. Ready? Okay, so let's talk about have you got the strength to get stronger? If we break down speed to get quick, what is the basic equation? Well, if we look at strength and we look at velocity, so if we look at a power chart and we look at the torque, the gear, the strength, the force versus the velocity, the cadence, we have to do something in that equation to get quicker, don't we? Now, obviously, there are lots of metrics. The wind resistance coach, mm. the gradient coach, the type of bike I've got, mm. I've got fucking shit wheels, it's not fair. Mm. I've only got a gravel bike and he's got a $10,000 road bike. Na -ni -na -ni -na -ni -na. Bullshit, they're bullshit, okay? We do not go down a path that takes us outside of what we have not got. So you sign up first, look around you, look in the mirror, that's what you're dealing with, okay? We deal with what we have. But what does the strength to improve strength mean? Well, if we look at strength, we look at the workouts. So here's a scenario of what I would say uh, to a client. First thing, absolute power. Okay, so we would look at the absolute power. Now, what type of athlete are you? Are you a predominantly fast twitch fiber athlete or a slow twitch fiber athlete? You can work that out with your peak powers. Men, if you're over a thousand, yeah. Women, if you're over 750. Okay, and that's a generalization. So what is a guaranteed fact? The older we get, the less strength we have. Yeah, because we lose lean tissue. So as we get older, we have to impact on that. So does that mean if I just consolidate and don't progress, I can stay strong? Strictly, yes, that is the challenge, but we want to keep hitting strength. So the ideal approach would be increased resistance. How are we going to do that? You're going to work on hills. I've got plenty of them, coach, and I'll work on them. You're going to work on hills increasing the torque. Okay, so the gearing that you use on the hills. We could possibly increase the resistance through the legs by increasing the weight of the bike. So we could use from the concrete bottle trick to putting a few more tools on the saddle bag that we've got. Okay, you load up the bike, remember, never the body. Why? Because you'll change your position on the bike if you load up your pockets with more weight and you'll sit a little bit different. That'll interfere with your pelvis. So load up the bike go out on an older bike and increase that resistance. So you're increasing the torque through your legs. That is the most specific way of training. Remember, principles of training, specificity. If you want to get fast in the swimming pool, get in the swimming pool. If you want to get fast on a bike, get on a bike. But of course, we can impact on the, the absolute strength with gym work, with loading up. Now, the trouble with this is, if you have no history of lifting weights, you may lift with poor form and you may lead to injury and you will 100%, if you've got no experience, you will not follow an activation or a fiber recruitment phase because fuck that coach, I haven't got enough time. Right? I'm in the gym Monday, boom, I'm lifting max weights Wednesday and I'm in casualty Friday. My back, oh, I can't move. What I mean is if you're going to the gym, Please take expert advice, okay, which usually means take advice from somebody who's got a suntan, nice teeth, nice hair. They're usually the people that work in these places that can give you advice. <laughs> I've got neither. Although, it is known in the summertime, I do take the odd tan. 
Uh, but the hair in the teeth, I was going to say hair, teeth and tits, but I don't have neither of them either, okay? But you know what I mean. Take expert advice, okay, if you're falling. But if you want to learn about recruitment or fibres, etc., come and join school. We talk about that shit all the time. But think about the strength. So if you have no strength work, and I'm talking about posture work off the bike as well, body squats. What about BFR work? Do you want to see the workouts I do? Come and join me in school. I'll be doing a few of them this week and sharing. So lots of ways where we would attack strength. So tick that off, okay? You're either doing specific strength work within your training or you're not, okay? Do you need to change the strength work or do you need to add to it? What about, can you clear up the mess you make? This is a phrase I use when we're talking about lactate. So. How are you aware, okay, that when we go fast, what we want to do is have two systems working together? Now, you've got a number of systems that supply energy and they're all switched on. But if we take your understanding from high school science of anaerobic and aerobic, both of them are working at the same time. Agreed? Yeah. Depends on the intensity, coach, how hard one's working. Okay, so our threshold is supported by our aerobic work, okay? Our aerobic engine supports the higher work because we've got to recover. Your anaerobic system is very, very short, but when you're actually working at this faster speed, what we need to do is clean up the mess. So you need to be able to remove or clear or sponge or use for fuel the lactate that you're producing. Now remember, when this lactate is then used as fuel, it releases, there is still waste products, hydrogen ions. So without getting too sort of sciencey, what you need to understand is, if you wanna get fast, what we've got to do is have this ability to clear the lactate. We have to have this high level of clearance. So how many of you do a hard effort, maybe a minute up a hill and you're breathing out your ass? That's it, the group's gone or, or the workout that you've planned, you've gone too hard. What you need to do is to be able to build up an ability to repeat, repeat, rest and repeat. And we do this mainly two simple ways, okay? We're going to do zone five, preferably high intensity work, 20, 30, 40 seconds. Have a one-to-one -one ratio of recovery, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Reduce the recovery until it's around 15 to 20 seconds. This high intensity work, say over a block of five to 10 minutes at a time, is going to do wonders for your ability, okay, to work at a high level and then clear that lactic out. Now imagine putting it back into the strength workout. So let's say we take a hill and we're doing more strength work and then we start to add some VO2 into the same hill. And the other way is, as you know, to increase the metabolic response of your mitochondria, to activate more, to increase your cardiovascular network of capillaries. How many times around the world does it go? Shout it out. Two and a half times around the world. Fuck me, okay? That is incredible. Now, what is the biggest single killer across the planet? health-wise, cardiovascular issues, heart, okay, respiratory, circulatory dementia. These things are killers, okay? As we get older, you're going to lose your strength. Guess what else you're going to lose? Your circulatory network. Your fingers are going to get cold. Your toes are going to get cold. And men, you know, you're going to need Viagra. Not to get anything going, but just to get your blood flow going. I mean, that's how bad it's going to get. However, some of you will join me in my longevity of motion course in 2024. And you will be the spikiest, fastest. I was going to say over 50, but you might only be over 40 or even over 30. But anyway, when science says the decline starts... Kinetic comes along and says, fuck off, decline. I'm going to be the fastest OAP <laughs> in the group, okay? 
I can just imagine my Springer Spaniel brain, that time I get to 60 years old and I join the local lawn bowls club and everybody's sitting around with a crest sandwich having a little chat about Radio 5 and along comes me. Fucking God help them. Okay, anyway, you got it? So we've got to be doing some Zone 5 work. And we've got to be building that mitochondrial metabolic response. How? Zone 2. Okay, now your Zone 2 needs to be clever. You need to be working towards that variable index of 1.00 to 1.02. Without it, you're not working your Zone 2. Want to know what variable index is? Come and join us inside school. This is a light touch summary video, but understand that it's got something to do with the average power versus the normalized power. Far too many people think that normalized power is like rubbing a lamp and getting this genie to say, I believe that you could hold 310 watts for 20 minutes. Me. Okay. Doesn't work that simple. We're going to use it for our zone two. So if you go outdoors and you say, Yes, I'm trying to do zone two, coach, but I find it ridiculously difficult with all these hills here. So it's almost impossible for me. That is an extract from the book, Mr. Wanker, written by Tim Wankchops. Okay, Tim Wankchops. Okay, we all know Tim Wankchops. There's one in your local area, one in your local club. They are confused by their ego, and they're confused by what we call gears, okay? On your bike, if you have a double ring, there is an inner chain ring. Some people don't know it exists, but it does. And when you flip it into that uh, inner chain ring, you can reduce the torque, and you can actually spin up a lot of hills without exerting zone five, on your heart rate. Hmm, takes discipline. So why would you want to do this? Because the clearance of lactic acid when we're working hard is evident on the riders who have built the discipline of having a high level of that metabolic response. What do I mean by that? That ability to mix and match the highest percentage of fat for fuel. Okay, right. Next one. Tick that off. Are you doing that work? Because if you are, you're going to get fast. What about do you have the correct environment? Uh, even if I can't spell environment wrong, I'll get that down there quickly. Did you spot that deliberate mistake? This is to keep your attention. Hey, we're at 118. Did somebody say, we're over 100? Okay. I didn't hear you. Okay. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button as well. Okay. So, what do I mean about the environment? Well, this, this is really important. This goes back to this, do you avoid, okay, you know, the need to fail. You, you know, you, you just avoid failure because you don't put yourself in scenarios that stretch yourself. So think about that environment. I do a lot of my outdoor riding solo. I'm never late for a solo ride. I can control the speed of a solo ride, but I can also control the shadows. I can hide in the shadows. I can create a lie from a truth. You put yourself in a group, as long as you label that group and you identify what it means to your training. You can't go along to a group and say, hey guys, I'm just going to ride on zone two today. You're going to get the bird straight up and say, good luck, Tim Wankchops. We've heard about you from Coach Scott. Okay. Anyway, the thing is, when we're in that group scenario, we can increase accountability. We can increase the stakes. When we do an organized event, what I call when you put a number on your back, you put a number on your bike, your number on your back, suddenly, vroom, okay? You're like a Doberman with an elastic band round its willy. Vroom, vroom, yeah, eyes are popping out your head. You're ready for a fight. You're ready for it. You've increased that fight or flight mode. Think about your own accountability. Maybe you'll come into school. Maybe you'll do a meetup ride with me on Zwift. Maybe that'll just give you that little bit of a push to increase your accountability. Many people often say to me, hey coach, I'm plateauing my fitness. I'm not progressing. And I'll say, well, how are you sharing? Who are you riding with? There's an old phrase back from the 80s and the 70s. Those guys my age will know this. If you want to get fast, go and hang out where the fast boys are. 
normally I would do uh, similar things to this and go and hang out where the kids that didn't behave, the kids that didn't wear their school uniform, the kids that were late home. Yeah, they, they, that kind of caused a bit of confusion until I sort of worked it out. But think about that accountability. So what are you doing that's going to raise the stakes? Because most of you understand the kinetic attic space, that 15% space that you've never even gone to. Imagine everybody had 15% extra space, let's say in your house. What would you do with that? What would you do? I'd fucking have a cinema room. Oh yeah, I'd be watching Rocky. I'd be watching Rambo. I'd be watching Predator. Yeah, I'd be practicing holding a gun with one hand. I think I could probably hold a pistol with one hand rather than some fucking machine gun off a helicopter. <laughs> Remember, I've got arms like straws with a pea stuck in them. But the whole idea of that 15% space, how many of you have even gone to 1% of it? Because when you're doing a tough workout, the opportunity to jump off is great. Now think about that for a second. What I mean by that is the doubt. Think about that, okay? Because it's important to where we're going in this video. How many times has that happened to you? What do you do? How do you combat that? How do you combat that doubt? Especially when you're on your own. Okay, you're on your own, there's no one around, but then how does it make you feel an hour, two hours later? Do you feel bad? Does it then motivate you for the next workout? But then the next workout should be a different type of workout. Do you end up on that never-ending treadmill of chasing something that you never quite find? Hmm, think about that, okay? Right, let's look at do your workouts, are they rehearsals, are performances? Okay. Are they workouts, rehearsals, are performances? So what do I mean by that? This is a really important phase now in all aspects of training. So if you want to go faster, how are you reviewing what you're doing? So you should be continually focused on the goal of Whatever it is you want to increase, the speed for a Strava section, speed over a particular time trial event, a loop, speed can offer us feedback immediately on our fitness. Because what you've got to understand is speed, okay, or fast is fitness. That's all it is. So your global goal of increasing your fitness needs to be taken into account that you've got a measure of a rehearsal to measure how you're developing, okay? So what you're doing is you're creating review points, you're creating opportunities in your training, okay? To make sure you're going faster. As I often say, as Greg Lemoyne would often say, it never gets easier, it gets faster. So a rider, if we go back to the previous phase, who's always chasing, never quite satisfied, never quite completes, never quite satisfied, it's always moving forward. Of course you're getting fitter because everything's getting faster. And people will say to me, it never feels any easier. Of course it doesn't, because those particular high intensity exercises are supposed to create what? Overload. They're supposed to push you over the edge of what is tolerable to make sure that you have got an adaptive process via your immune system, your cardiovascular system, your skeletal system, that makes you more resilient the next time you're presented with the stimulus. Makes sense, doesn't it? So, you need to then create baselines. Yeah, you need to create baselines that allow you to measure your fitness. Well, you do an FTP test. It's kind of bollocks though, an FTP test as a continual measurement of your fitness, okay? Because without being rude, most apps use a test that just allows you to drift from, you know, aerobic to anaerobic and all over the place, okay? And what you're actually doing is going 1%, 2%, 3% into your attic space. <laughs> I promise you, you are. Most tests become behavioural responses. However, tests 
that work at sub-maximal level or work at a particular baseline number that you cannot change over a season or over a two-year period, that gives you a metric that you can then say, hey, I'm moving because there are external metrics of that. Again, if you don't know what I mean by that, I'm going to be sharing inside school this week, the time of doing this live, I'm going to be sharing a power to weight effort that can be used at zone two. A power to weight drill that will allow you to dial in your weight and power, but also one that pushes you beyond. Impossible for you to stay in zone two. But we use that number and we use it regularly for two, three, six, 12 months and you watch the numbers change. It's phenomenal. So think about your own training at the moment what you've got, where are the rehearsals, how are you processing? Because it's easy to look at a workout and look at the negativity, but there is always something positive from it. And remember, some days you are the hammer and some days you are the nail. Because, what did I say at the start? Intrinsic and extrinsic factors that are impacting on you every single second. They have a different effect on your body. and depends where your immune system is. What are the biggest contributors to oxidative stress that you know of? What do you think? Workouts? <coughs> okay. Nutrition. Stress uh, from travel and working conditions that impact on sleep. And then your hydration. Way before workouts come into play. But that's boring, coach. Okay. I know that. What the fuck are you doing about it then? Why do so many people know it, but the world is getting fatter? Okay, tell me that. If we know it, well, why are we not doing anything about it? Oh, we can balance our weight with workouts. Can you? How's that going for you? Is that is that working out okay? No. Why not? Yeah, because it's bollocks, isn't it? Yeah. Again, let's go back to those people with a tan, teeth and tits. Yeah. You said they were the experts, coach. I'm not saying they're not. Okay. <laughs> A little secret. I've got two degrees and at least five coaching awards, okay? And then I've got bike fitting certifications that place me in one of the top fitters in the world. Okay. Anyway, let's go back to uh, what we're talking about. Okay. So, you got that? How are you reviewing the rehearsal? Okay. Every session leads on to another. Okay, now this is really important. I'm going to share with you an elite focus, the C plan, okay? <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Some of you are getting really nervous, aren't you? Okay, d please. Don't worry. I'm I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to swear. You got my little brain going. <laughs> Don't say it. Don't say it, coach. Okay. And breathe. Okay, everybody relax. Okay, he's not going to say that. It's not, okay? Right. Now, let's take your whole life now. Let's look at your training and let's look at your life. And let's look at all the actions that we participate in. You know, what we are driven towards. You know, what pushes us towards these actions. Now, I've, I've mentioned briefly that type of, you know, we've mentioned Tim Wank, okay? He's changed his name a little bit, but there's also that concept of, of chasing. So, look at your training in the next, you know, next day. Look at the history of it. Let's look at the last month or the last six months, okay? And I want you to look at the completion, okay? So, the first C, as I always talk about people, is completion. So why did you not complete a workout? What were the reasons? Did you review it? Did you feed back to yourself? Did you create a lie from the truth? Oh, I was tired. I had a bad night's sleep. Why were you doing that particular workout on top of those health metrics? Okay. Fitness is a byproduct of good health. Okay. Fitness will support health, but it damages health in the short term if you do not follow a good recovery plan. Okay. So the completion of workouts increases for an elite athlete in the early phases. And this is why I talk about a four week recruitment phase. If you can then have a high level of completion, you have a high level of compliance. 
And that compliance is when you turn up and turn up and turn up because you're able to complete what you're doing. Now, there is a very famous worldwide app goes by the initials of TR, and many people come back to them and say, fuck that, I couldn't do the first two weeks. It was too difficult for me. Okay. Now, difficulty on apps is a trait that they look for. Why? Because it's directly linked to cognitive stimulus. Many people in the world think that you, yes, you, are a moron. Okay. And you have the capacity of a flower thinking power, okay? And you need to be stimulated. You need to be given little crumbs and biscuits all the time. Come on, boy, come on. Here's a workout for you. Yeah, get to the end, get to the end. There's a little biscuit. So all this stimulus and lots of variable efforts and all over the place. And when I did my last poll talking about cognitive stimulus, music and video, nearly a third of the people were doing video and music. Jesus Christ, you know. How was there any time for you to directly make a cognitive connection physically with the workout? Okay, so what I'm getting at is, okay, you need to increase the completion, to increase the compliance, which directly leads to the number one factor for any level of athlete in any sport, and that is confidence. If you can increase confidence, you will maximize performance and you will maximize speed. If you see performance increasing, that person's confident. They're confident in their ability. It is that simple. So many people who are not completing workouts, they tend to fall into that, oh, I'm just become weak. They are unlikely to change their intensity level because they've just put it down to, oh, I had a bad night's sleep, I'm not fueling very well, I need to increase my mindset, I need to work harder. Okay, well, let's say that you do then complete the workout, but the overreaching means that you can't complete the next workout or the next workout, or you're continually fatigued and you're building up that catabolic phase, you're staying in it longer. Two weeks later from the first field workout, you get a sore throat. Boom. Okay. Because on top of all that, you're not eating very well, you're not managing stress very well, which means you're not sleeping very well. The key things that increase oxidative stress in the body, which, by the way, did you know, increase lactic acid at rest inside the cell? Ah, oh, you didn't know that. Okay, well, that's also leading to other health problems. Hmm, interesting. All because of chasing a workout that you didn't complete. Now, what's all this got to do with with speed. Let's go all the way back to the first point I said. Have you got the strength to build strength? Some of you have made notes. Yeah, I know, because you're good students. And some of you are already thinking, I could do that workout. Now, in all of the five points I've talked about, I've mentioned briefly something that goes under the radar that people forget. If we spend time at a slightly higher resistance than normal, okay, and we create friction through the muscles, okay, we increase their, their force, yeah. Now, for some people, you've, your, your genetics give you a lot of fast twitch fibres, and you can make those fibres thicker, they get stronger. You've maybe got a peak power of 1,200, 1,300, 1,400 watts. Now, that's great for certain workouts, but the point I'm getting at is many people often confuse touch points with training. I'm going to go for that four hour sweet spot coach that they mention on YouTube that will give me the highest possible return in the mitochondrial density and its metabolic response. Fucking good luck with that, okay? Because if you've got no history or building up of the tolerance to touch points and time, you will only break down. There is no, and let me repeat that, there is no magic time that you must bypass for suddenly the pixies of the mitochondrial to come out, wave the flags, hallelujah, hallelujah. It doesn't work like that, okay? 30 minutes for some people is as good as 90 minutes, is as good as four hours for others, okay? So when we're dealing with strength and we're dealing with speed, 
Something that some people, especially older riders, should do is increase the touch points. 30 minute and 40 minute sessions. If you're able to, if you increase the touch points during the week, and you might not go over your normal time, six to eight hours is the average that I see. But if you're training two 30s or a 30 and a 40 minute in the day rather than a one hour stretch, hmm, guess what? Potentially, okay, I'm not saying that you will, but you've got a higher potential to increase the loading and the resistance through the leg muscles. Even at zone two, you're getting stronger, okay? So that's something to think about. Let's summarize that. How do I then get quick coach? Well, okay, you focus on strength. You focus on velocity, okay? Because I've not mentioned the key drill that we'll share. I'll be doing some meetup rides. I do some live sessions as well. Low cadence, high torque. Many people ask me about this. We've been doing this for decades, folks, okay? So what this is, is run about a 60 RPM, six, zero. I didn't say six, I said six. One, two, three, four, five, six, one less than seven. Got that? No fucking jokes about the way I say six. It's not six. Six is something completely different, okay? So I have been told, okay? <laughs> anyway, what we do is we try and inc increase, okay? the torque through this lower cadence. We start to feel the pedal stroke. And this can have a phenomenal effect on the strength of people. I advise this for people who are low in absolute power. So maybe you're built like a scarecrow like me and you're, you know, you're weighing in 50, 60, 65 kilos. Okay, you've not got that big hulking muscle. If we start to develop without over torquing and damaging our knees and our hips, this is a wonderful workout. So you throw it into your strength workout. Yeah, you start to do different cadences. Okay, now you will find that you are able to do strength work at 60 RPM and you'll be amazed at the gearing that you can do. You must sit down, but standing up is okay to start with because you'll still feel the strength. But remember, you're using your body weight over what we call the peak angle of the pedal stroke to push down. But what will happen is you'll start to see yourself hit threshold, go above at this lower torque. What is an ideal gradient? Anywhere between two and 4% works really well, but it depends on your fitness. But if you're not doing any of this work, take it off, add it in, go back to the rehearsal versus performance. You can have a feel of this. Okay, so when you're doing a strength ride, can you see what you can do? You can have a ride that's say two hours long. Okay, let's go for two hours. You start off, you do one hour zone two. So you're going to clean up the mess when the mess comes along. After an hour, we start to then do high intensity work. We do some short 20, 30 second zaps on a hill, VO2. And then we finish off. We do some lower cadence work closer to home. Oh, suit you, sir. And then we do a cool down, home, go through all your recovery processes. And then you try and build in those speed tests, okay? Oh, there's so much I can share with you folks, okay? Right, anyway, I hope you've been putting win because someone is going to win a t-shirt during this session. I am going to close the win live at in seven minutes. We have got seven minutes, okay? Now, I promise you something a little bit extra, okay? So, did you know, okay, did you know this? Right? I want to give you a little bit of some things I've been researching, and one of them is your bib tights or your bib shorts. How many of you have got bib tights or bib shorts? Depending on what hemisphere you're in, okay? Right? So, if you are someone who, in bike fit terms, I would call the shorter, okay? So your shorter body, uh, maybe longer legs, or your shorter legs and longer body. So the longer body person tends to fit a lot of bikes not pro tend to have an issue with their saddle height. So I'm not going to go into the bike fitting position first. I want to talk about the clothing. So one, there are far too many people, I believe now, 
And that this is maybe a new phenomenon. Since cycling companies got fucking greedy, okay? And you've probably seen this. I've been seeing it for the last few years, especially bikes that have been coming to me. And bike companies, they use the same shitty jargon. Yes, energy prices are going up. So we've had to increase the the price of the bike because that source or materials and no, 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 no. Yeah, they're getting greedy. I would love for a bike manufacturing company to come out and just say, do you know what? We're going to keep the profit margin at this level and we're going to give you the best bike. Okay, but yeah, it's not going to happen, is it, coach? But what I mean is over the last few years, clothing, I mean, it's got so expansive. It's got so expensive. And everybody's got the best of gear. Yeah. You've all got Tim Wank in your club, haven't you? Turns up in Rafa gear. Yeah. He does the first hill and it's fucking five degrees and he's sweating buckets. Now, what I mean is clothing is essential, especially if we're going fast. We want to have aerodynamics. However, how many lungs have you got? Most people, two. Okay. How many diaphragms have you got? One, okay? So the whole idea of your breathing is controlled through the torso, your lungs, diaphragm, nasal, mouth, breathing, okay? Some people do breathe through their arse, okay? You've probably seen them again in your ride. <laughs> you can usually hear them. They sound like Darth, we Darth Vader and a walrus. But the thing is, in your bike position, if your position is, is not right, if your bike is to the wrong size, Normally, the bike is too big, top tube's too high, saddle's too high. This throws people out. Your diaphragm position, okay, as you've got a collapsing hip, yeah, you've collapsed, so sitting, boom, collapsing, pelvis shoots up in the air, like a ramp. So if your pelvis shoots up in the air, okay, so there, there, okay. So it goes from there and it shoots up in there. Where's your diaphragm? Yeah, here. Okay, so it gets compressed. Now, a lot of people are wearing and they'll tell me, hey, I've got four layers on today. I'm not going to feel the cold. Yeah, you've got a base layer on that you wish you could fit into. Yeah, it's more like a girdle. And what this is already doing is it's constricting, okay, your airways. Now, yes, there is a form of compression whereby we're sending blood back to the belly of the muscle, etc. and all that. Okay, but remember, science on compression is variable. And I can tell you for a fact, it's going to have a bigger impact if we do high intensity work and you wear it after. However, the tight clothing is making an impact on your breathing. What you should be doing first is looking at clothing, okay, that allows you to stay warm in respect to the workout you're going to do, okay? Understanding that it's the perimeter, the extremities, your nose, your ears, your fingertips, and your toes that will feel the cold more as the circulation stops, okay? Or it gets restricted due to the cold there, okay? So keep those areas warm, various tactics. Don't wear tight clothing, and don't wear too much clothing. Now, this brings me to the bib tights. Now, this is a phenomenon you may not be aware of. However, if you are a long body, but let's say you're of a medium or a small size, it is generally the shorts and tights that I have looked at that the straps are not long enough for you. So what this does, I want you to imagine this, and I've seen this in a number of riders. They wear the bib tights, okay? Now, they also then may wear them over another couple of garments. So maybe you do this and it, it, it seals that clothing in and then you wear a, 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 ja a jacket or a top over the top. However, as they pull down on your shoulders a little bit, your chin goes out. And remember, the further away your chin is from your sternum, okay, the more hinging takes place on your neck. This also impacts on breathing. And I would, in some of the riders I've seen over the last week, cut the top of their bib tights. Yeah, I know some of them are expensive. And I would stitch in another piece of material, 
okay? So that they were not tight. You should be able to feel on your shoulders, oh, this feels really tight. So when you lean forward, your chin comes up. I can't turn my head away too much. I've got a microphone in front of me. If I turn my head away, you can't hear me. Fucking, yeah, sorry. It's not funny, is it, coach? Anyway, think about that, okay? Think about that. So, when you're on your bike, think about the performance element. One of the key things that you can do today or tomorrow that will increase your speed is the position of your hip on the saddle. Do you ride on the hoods, the bars, or the drops? If you want to go fast, you know you want to be on the drops. The drops are the closest in terms of reach and will allow you to pull your pelvis forward and down. Think of a sprinter coming out of the blocks. Think of their feet position. So as you roll your foot round the pedal stroke, there is an angle called your peak torque angle. For a lot of road cyclists, it's going to be around 100 to 120 degrees. Okay? And at that point, you're increasing the torque to its maximum level. And what you want to do is to use your muscular strength, your glutes, your quads, etc. Now, if you've got a nice, lovely, upright posture position, think about that. Okay? Think about sliding forward and angling down so that we drive through the stroke. It is a very, very simple drill, but very few people practice it. It also will tell you, because you'll get a sensation through your feet as well, if you need to go back and look at your cleats. Remember I talked about two feet are not the same length. So it means that the cleats become more important. Now, what is restricting the majority of people going faster? Two things, okay? Before I say that, we've got a, we've got some winners have been sent to me. I'm going to do that in a second once I go through this really important point. Okay. The key two things that are stopping you are bikes are generally too big. Okay, so top tube, front, they're too big. And this changes the confidence. But this usually leads to the saddle being too high. So the, the knee angle, when we fall, fall forward onto that peak torque, you haven't got enough quadricep action, okay? You can explode. So, think about that, okay? There is obviously a link that people can use. The partnership I've got with my Velo Fit. if you want to measure knee angles, use their AI intelligence. There is a discount code. I think in school we've got 10, 15% discount. Those guys offer you $75 for a year for as many measurements as you can. I would look at that knee angle and all you need to do is I'll do a session, several sessions in fact in school, looking at particular angles that are optimal. There is no one that's the best for you. It all takes place to do with your flexibility and your range of movement, okay? Uh, but it's something to look at that a lot of people, they don't know where to start. I'm giving you a starting point, okay, because it's something that might benefit you. And I'm talking about even if you've got knee issues, knee pains, you've got groin pains, you've got IT band pains, that's saddle height. Remember, fit from the top down. You get your saddle correct, you therefore increase the margin of error on the handlebars and the cleats, the other contact points. So basically, they don't need to be as accurate. Not saying that you should follow that, but it gives you that little bit more flexibility. So never ever change your cleats or your handlebar position until you're comfortable with the saddle. That's how to get fast, folks. Okay? So, you give me a thumbs up. I can check. How was that? Did you enjoy that? We've covered quite a lot there. I didn't mean to speak for so long. Do we want a winner? Mm. Who's going to win live T-shirt? Okay, let me see. I should have in front of me a winner okay i can't find it okay i'll give it a few seconds it will come through okay just give me a second until my winner comes up but anyway make sure you've given the video a thumbs up please come and join inside school okay so remember inside school you can 
Scan that code, you can rewind the video, you can find it, okay, and you can scan it, and that will give you an introduction into my free, put the wrong thing on there, my free group. Can you hear my phone going? We've got positions and, okay. Oh, we've done it. So my admin team, congratulations to Anne Daly and Dennis Lopez. You are the two winners, Anne Daly and Dennis Lopez. If you are still online and you are live now, what you have to do is you have to find a way of contacting me. So you can use my email, kineticcyclecoaching at gmail.com. That email is inside the YouTube about page. You can easily find me. Okay, you're going to message me, we're going to work out your size and we're going to get a, an address and we're going to post your t-shirt to you. You're then going to take a picture of it and you're going to send it in so everybody else can see it. If you are watching on Catch Up, you still have a chance to win. All you've got to do is comment win. When the video gets uploaded, we will then use the software and pull out a couple of winners and we'll announce them in next week's show. How much have I got to share with you? Do you know that the time of shooting this video, we have eight Mondays, including this one, until the 1st of January 2024. That's a lifetime, people. A lifetime. So I've got lots to share. And you're going to build this channel now. You're going to build the opportunity, okay, to have your voice said, okay? Now, Q&A sessions, they take place inside school. you got to be in school to get all them when I answer questions. Hey, 133 likes. I am loving that. Thank you very much for spending time with me. We've been on 51 minutes, okay? I hope that was beneficial for you. Let me know what you would like to do in future videos. What would you like me to talk about? I want to go through next week a little bit of zone two work. Share with you the metabolic responses, but give you a power to weight test that I'll be introducing inside school, a challenge test for your power to weight at zone two that will take you to zone three, an opportunity to build control with a VI score of one to 1.02 if you use power on your outdoor rides, show you how to do it, how it is possible. And also show you how you can use a group ride. Yeah, that, that what we, a guy would call willy measuring, group ride, but how you can use it for a zone two ride. Oh, yeah, now that's a secret worth doing. I do love group rides, you need them if you can get them. Social interaction, folks. It's good to talk. It's good to be part of a community. It's good to be involved in something where people, no matter what country they're in, no matter what fucking time zone they're in, we all share the same passion. We share the same DNA. We share the same genetics. We all want similar things. And together we can do that, okay? I have a passion. I am on a mission, okay? At age 53, I want to create the most inclusive, supportive cycling community in the world in my school platforms. I am still modifying and identifying how to make them into what I want. I'll get there. Okay, and I want you to be part of that. Okay, this we're not talking about just making you fast and fit on a bike, we're talking about life. Okay, we have an opportunity through fitness to elevate every aspect of our life. I'll show you how to do it, folks. Okay, that's it, right? So, don't forget that. Comment win if you're watching the uploaded show. The winner will be announced in next week's show. And use the code, QR code, or scan, or find the description in the video to join school. And those of you who have bought Kinetic Kit, we should be shipping out on the 21st of November. But I'll be outlining all that inside school. Hey, folks, thank you for joining. Make sure you've subscribed. Make sure you share this with a friend who doesn't know that we exist. That would be helpful. You take care. I love you all. Remember, anyone can train hard. There's only a few of us can train smart. You keep smiling, keep spinning. 
the sweat will come. Take care, folks. I'll see you all soon.